Who did we say cannot be the Antichrist? Uh, besides Judas? Yeah, besides Judas and you Hitler. You mentioned a few people, like even Mussolini, and you said... Uh -huh. Can you read them out, the names, if you wrote them out? Um, so some of the... So oh, you said, no, human being goes to the bottomless pit, but the Antichrist will be a human being used by Satan. And so the view of it being Judas or people like Mussolini, Hitler, cannot be be believed as no human being can go to the bottomless pit and come back. So who, who are the four people I zeroed in on and talked about to say there can be a possibility? I did put an argument there and proved uh, last, last week. Who remembers? No one remembers? Nobody remembers? Come again, I didn't, I didn't hear your question. We can't hear you, Mama. Can you come again, please? Uh, we are talking of the people that I gave um, uh, views, possible names, uh, that are uh, being used is um, theories to say they will be the Antichrist or the two beasts. Uh, and then at the end, I actually gave you four names. And for among the four names, I think I, I gave the other two uh, the argument why there is a possibility and why there cannot be a possibility. And I was left with two. Does anyone remember any of the four? I can try. Um, I think you mm -hmm. mentioned Hitler, Joseph Stalin, um, Mussolini, and Judas Iscariot. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then I left, I was left with who did I say um, can possibly be the one? Because I was still arguing, arguing about one, one more. Okay, so I argued against the, the view that uh, the Antichrist shall be the devil incarnate, right? So the word devil used in Judas, uh, in John, in the book of John, John chapter six, verse 70, um, I said the word devil in Greek is diabol diabolos, if you remember, D-I-A-B-O-L-O-S, and it means adversary, slanderer, false accuser with or without the definite article, the devil. Is it that... merely portrays Judas as an adversary of Christ, not the devil incarnate in human flesh or, or the offspring of the devil. You understand? So we, 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 in, we were on verse 9. So in Revelation 12, verse 9, the great red dragon symbolizes Satan. And this dragon will give his seat or power and authority to the beast that is the Antichrist. Remember Revelation 13, verse 1 to 2. These are clearly two distinct personalities proving that the Antichrist will not be an incarnation of the devil. In, Ro in Revelation 19, verse 20, Christ at his second advent will seize the beast and his false prophet and cast them into the lake of fire. At the same time, the devil shall be cast into the bottomless pit. Revelation 20, verse 1 to 3. So the devil and the Antichrist, it is clear, will go to the different places. Okay? So the devil and the Antichrist, it is clear, will go to two different places. If the Antichrist were the devil incarnate, then the devil, being the Antichrist, would go either to the abyss or to the lake of fire at the end of the millennium, 1,000 years later. So the devil shall be cast into the lake of fire where the beast and the false prophets are being revealed in Revelation 20 verse 10. So this doesn't appear to be a situation in which the devil is incarnated himself in the Antichrist, right? So in this segment, we must learn of the acts of the Antichrist who is the first beast 
of this chapter, okay? So Revelation 13 verse 4, it says, and they worshiped, they worshiped the dragon which gave power unto the beast and they worshiped, um, sorry, sorry. And they worshiped the dragon which gave power unto the beast and they worshiped the beast saying, who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? Uh, who remembers, uh, we were talking about the wounds. Who remembers that? Pastor, I think that's when you were kind of giving uh, examples how that the wound will be healed, but that you were saying it's it's not just the wound doesn't represent one person. It's actually representing the nations. And you were telling us that those were the, what are those nations? Are that the 10 nations? Confederation? No, no, no. I just want to know about the wound. What did I say? Because that's the way the significance of separating the Antichrist and uh, the devil right there when he's talking about the wound. And I also explained why we talk of the Antichrist, uh, the big wound, did, was, did, was he killed? Was, it, uh, was he dead? Was he resurrected? Was he, you know, I talked about all those things. Oh yeah, you said he wasn't uh, killed. So he was wounded, but he didn't die or anything like that, but he is gonna manipulate and, and try to manipulate people and say that he has risen imitating Jesus Christ's okay. resurrection. Okay, all right. So um, so the admiration of the beast by the people, remember, I told that people who admire the beast, right? After this incident, the people are going to admire the beast. So the admiration of the beast by the people of the world is going to translate into the worship of the dragon. That is the devil and the beast now. This is where the world is going to worship the dragon for it is he that would have given power to the what? To the wounded beast. So the word worship, I told you that in Greek is called proskuneo, P-R-O-S-K-U-N-E-O, -E which means to kiss or to, like, to lick like a dog. You know, when a dog lick his master's hand and to fawn or to crouch to, that is to prostrate oneself in homage, is to adore, to worship, is to reverence, right? So this will be a classical case of boot licking and outright veneration of the first beast. So it is the adoration of the people of the world. The people will say, who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? Remember, I talked about this last week. This is a rhetorical statement, okay? Meaning that the beast is an unequaled and invincible in history and in his time. I want someone to read for me Revelation chapter 13, verse 5, very quickly. It's going to talk about the first beast uh, of Revelation 13 shall be given a mouth to speak great things and blasphemies. I talked about this, remember, last time. Is there anyone who is ready to read verse 5 of Revelation? And he was given a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and he was given authority to continue for 42 months. Okay, there's, is there someone who can read for me verse 6? It opened its mouth to blaspheme, to blasphemy God and to slander his name and his dwelling place, those who live in heaven. Someone can read, someone reads uh, verse 8. Open your Bibles. We are doing Bible study. Open your Bibles. Come on. Everybody, when I say let's go, you are great. I don't know how you do it. I teach following verse by verse. So everything that you are hearing, I'm just looking at your Bible. I'm not taking it from anywhere else. I'm looking at my Bible and I'm explaining right from your Bible. So open Revelations, open the Bible, open your own Bible in the book of Revelations. That's where we are at. We are on verse, um, I want you to read verse, um, what verse eight, right? Revelation 13, verse eight. 
all the inhabitants of the earth will fall down and worship him. Everyone whose name has not been written since the foundation of the world in the book of life of the Lamb who has been slain. Amen. Thank you. So as, as we noted in verse 2 of chapter 13, the giver is Satan himself. He shall be given power, uh, the beast shall be given power to do his act in 42 months. In, the, in this case, the giver of the time is God. For Satan would not invest into this beast so much as to operate only in that short duration of time. So 42 is three and a half years. And this is the last three and a half years of the seven year tribulation period. Uh, we heard on Revelation 18, verse 6, how he opened his mouth and blasphemed God. So in those 42 or three and a half years, um, tribulation period, the beast will open his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme or vilify the name of God and the tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. Can someone tell me, I talked about blasphemy that shall happen in the tabernacle. What did I say the blasphemy is going to be like? What is the blasphemy going to be like? I think you talked about sexual acts on the altar. And what else? Something that has to do with pigs. Anyone remembering? You know, I feel encouraged when you go and revise your notes. But when Ask Bridget, I was talking to her from eight o'clock up to now, I haven't had any time to sit down and rest. And I'm here to give you my heart, the word of God. Can you imagine when you ignore and you don't take your time to go and study and just in your cars, you know, the Spotify, where you can just, you know, listen again to, so that, you know, do you still want us to do the book of Revelation? Or you want us to just leave it and just preach each other? No, we want you to, to do the book. How many people really want to do this study? Yes, we because do. Because it takes a lot of time, guys, to prepare these studies. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I don't sleep the whole night. I sleep for two hours preparing these classes. You know, I'm so surprised that PCIC you do this. Do you know that I teach uh, two more groups and I tell you the way they are hungry, the way they, 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 they text me during the week with questions, the way they are so eager, the way they are so excited. You know, it's like they tell you everything in just one question, everybody, the end is up. But what are we doing, church? One day when the Lord takes me, you would think this woman taught us. Because I don't know for how long I'm going to be with you. But I'm doing my part. If you don't open your hearts and your lives to learn this, it's up to you. But I think I am pouring out my heart and everything the Lord has given me. I'm doing it faithfully so that you can be helped and you will not be deceived by the enemy. Okay, so another thing that is going to happen, uh, the abomination is when they begin to sacrifice on the altar, when they uh, 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 sacrifice things, dirty animals like pigs on the altar of God. So um, they will bl bl uh, blaspheme his name in the tabernacle, uh, and then the, the, the beast will outclass all who ever lived. He will outlive all those, uh, those who ever lived before him. You know, God and his tabernacle. That is his habitation. You know that a tabernacle is God's habitation. And them that dwell in heaven will also feel this abomination. So since God's tabernacle is mentioned in distinction from heaven, uh, this suggests that there will be a habitation of God on earth which the beast will hold in utmost impiety and disregard. So God's habitation could be here, a reference of the temple that shall exist in Jerusalem. If this is so, then this is in accordance with the word of Paul to the Thessalonians concerning the men of sin 
in the temple of God. That says, uh, anyone can read for me? Second Thessalonians chapter two, this is three to four. And can someone uh, hold for me? Daniel nine, verse 27. Can someone read for me? Thessalonians, second Thessalonians chapter two, verse three to four. And can someone also hold Daniel chapter nine, verse 27. Someone else hold Daniel 12, verse 11. This also ties in with the abomination of desolation spoken by both Daniel and the Lord Jesus Christ. <coughs> Anyone ready for 2 Thessalonians 2, 3, and 4? Anyone ready to read 2 Okay, I'll read. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, uh, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who oppose and exalts himself above all that is called God, or that are worshipped so that he is God seated in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Amen. Mm -hmm. Can someone read uh, Daniel 9, 27, and someone get Daniel 12, verse 11. Someone get Matthew 24, verse 15 for me. Daniel 9, 27, it says, and he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. And in the midst, in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate, even until consuma consummation and, the, and that determined and that demand shall be poured upon the desolate. Amen. So here we are seeing that um, um, this king will make a seven year treaty with the people. But after half that time, you will break his pledge and stop the Jews from all their sacrifices and their offerings. Then as climax to all his terrible deeds, the enemy shall utterly defile the sanctuary of God, but in God's time and plan, his judgment will be poured out upon the evil one. Can someone read for me Daniel 12 verse 11? It says, from the time that the daily sacrifice is abolished and the abomination that causes desolation is set up, there will be 100 1,290 days. Okay, someone read me Matthew 24, verse 15. Someone also yes, get yes. me First Thessalonians 4, verse 16 and 17. Get me Revelation 13, verse 7. Let's all work together. Matthew, 20, Matthew 24, verse 15. So when you see standing in the holy place, the abomination that causes desolation spoken of through the prophet Daniel. Let the reader understand. Mm -hmm. Let someone give us a uh, first Thessalonians 4, verse 16 to 17. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a with a loud command with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet call of God and the dead in Christ will rise first. After, after that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we'll be with the Lord forever. So on this one, um, the people referred to as them that were in heaven could well be those that by this time would have been caught up to heaven in the rapture 
whose details are given in 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 16 and 17, those that dwell in heaven would then be the saints, the church saints, right? So let's hear Revelations 13, verse 7. Revelations 13, verse 7. It was given power to wage war against God's holy people and to conquer them. And it was given authority over every tribe, people, language, and nation. Right. So the first beast, that is the Antichrist, and the government he represents shall make war with the saints and shall overcome them. They shall be saints living during the reign of the Antichrist. So these saints are not the church, for the church would have gone up to heaven before the reign of the Antichrist and before the commencement of the tribulation period. So the saints here are the tribulation saints. So they will become saints at the preaching of the 144,000 Jewish servants of God and the great revival that will sweep across the world during the tribulation period. So we will see this in Joel chapter 2, verse 28 to 32. You also see this in Acts chapter 2, verse 16 to 21. Revelation 7, verse 1 to 8. So many of them shall be killed for their faith in Jesus Christ and shall be the martyrs of the tribulation. Daniel 7, verse 21 up to in verse 25. Revelation 6, verse 9. Uh, to 11, Revelation 17, verse 6. So the first beast will exercise power. That is authority over all people of the earth. The first best beast is the individual Antichrist, is the same person called the little one in Daniel 7. When we compare what we read in the little one in Daniel 7, and the beast out of the sea, in Revelation 13, we'll discover that the two chapters are speaking of one and the same person, right? So I'm, I want you to look at the following, okay? One, the, the little horn of Daniel has the eyes of a man and a mouth speaking, again, uh, speaking great things, okay? Uh, that's Daniel chapter 7, verse 8. Someone, if you want, you can read that one. It says, I consider the horns. Uh, is there someone who wants to read that one? Daniel 7, verse 8. Um, Daniel 7, verse 8. It reads, while I was thinking about the horns, there before me was another horn, a little one, which came up among them, and three of the first horns were uprooted before it. This one had eyes like the eyes of a human being and a mouth that spoke forcefully. Mm -hmm. So the beast of Revelation has a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. That's Revelation 13 verse 5. Is there anyone who is there? Revelation 13 verse 5. And he was given a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. Um, his name, his tabernacle, and those who dwell in heaven against the Lord. Mm -hmm. Can someone get me uh, Daniel 7, verse 11 and verse 20? So the little horn of Daniel speaks great words against God, for which God destroys him. Right? Is someone there on Daniel chapter 7, verse 11 and verse 20? Then I continued to watch because of the boastful words the horn was speaking. I kept looking until the beast was slain and its body destroyed and thrown into the blazing fire. And then on 20, it goes to say, um, I also wanted to know about the 10 horns on its head and about the other horn that came up before which three of them fell, the horn that looked more imposing than the others and that had eyes and a mouth that spoke boastfully. Right. So you see the beast of Revelation does the same on verse 6. Revelation 13, verse 6. 
and he opened his mouth in blaspheme against God to blaspheme his name. That's verse six, right? So the little horn of Daniel fights the saints of God and kills them, right? The, the same horn, that's Daniel 7, verse 21 and verse 25. So the same horn made war with the saints and prevailed against them. He shall wear out the saints of the Most High. So the beast of Revelation does the same. Revelation 13, verse 7, and it was given unto him, right? To make war with the saints and to overcome them. So the little horn of Daniel kills God's saints for three and a half years, right? That's verse 25 of Daniel 7, verse 25. And they shall be given into his hand until a time and times in the dividing of time, right? So the beast of revelation exercises power for three and a half years and power was given unto him to continue 40 and two months, which is three and a half years still. That's on verse five. So the little horn, we find that the little horn of Daniel shall assume power over the 10 nation confederates. In his rise to power, he shall war against the three of the 10 kings of the 10 nation confederacy and conquer them. Daniel 7 verse 8, verse 20 and verse 24. So the beast of revelation shall make the 10 kings, including the vanquished three, to swear allegiance and give their power and sovereignty to him. We'll see that on Revelation 17, verse 12 to 13. But Revelation 13, verse 8 to name, uh, verse 8 to 9, it says, and all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him. Those whose names are not written in the book of life of the lamb slain from the foundation of the world, if any man have an ear, let him hear. So we have already seen from verse 4 how the world will worship the first beast. So these beast worshippers are people whose names are not written in the book of life of the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. So we are looking here at the unsaved people of the earth to say that their names are not written in the book of life of the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. This is to say that God's redemptive plan through the death of Jesus Christ on the cross was already preordained before the creation of the earth and by his foreknowledge, God knew all those who would embrace that redemptive plan and get saved and all who would reject it and be condemned. It is on the basis of this foreknowledge that God predestined some to life and others to eternal damnation. Someone get me Romans 8, verse 29 to 30. Someone get me Romans 9, verse 22 to 24. And someone else go to Mark 16, verse 16. And another one, John 3, verse 18 to 21. Someone get hold of first John 5, verse 12. I really wanted to talk about this because for a long time, we have been um, struggling to answer the question, so why should we evangelize if God knows already who is going to receive the word and who is going to deny it? It has been some, um, I mean, you know, for me, I had this question to say, so if God knew that Pharaoh was going to harden his heart, if God, what the scripture says, God hardened the heart of Pharaoh. So if God already knew that Pharaoh was going to harden his heart um, in the first place, why would God make it an issue? Because he was predestined to harden his heart. And I was on the issue of Judas Iscariot. I was questioning my professor. I said, it's unfair. Why would God uh, send Judas to hell if Judas uh, was predestined to be fulfilling this? Why would God send him to hell? What is the reason? But, you know, I got a shocking revelation. I don't know, are we, do we, did we open scriptures that I said? Yes, Anyone who is ready to read? Romans yes. 9, 
Okay, tell me everyone, where's the verse? Tell me which one are you going to read, Piola? Uh, Romans 8, verse 22 to 24. Okay, who else has got a verse to read? Romans 9. Mark 16, verse 16. Ivy Romans? No, Mark 16, verse 16. Mark 16, Mark, okay. Uh, Sister Priscilla, which one? Romans 9, verse 22 to 24. Romans 9, who else? Who were writing down the verses I was talking about? Okay, I said Romans 8. 1 John, 1 John 5.12. Okay. Who is reading John 3.18 to 21? I can open it. Okay, read Romans 8.29 to 30. You said John? Rome, Romans 8, verse 29 to 30. We have John 3. This 18 to 21, then first John 5, 12, then Mark 16, 16, then Romans 9, 22 to 24. So give me Romans 8, 29 to 30. And it says, for those gods for new, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. Mm -hmm. Give me Romans 9, 22 to 24. Romans 9, 22 to 24, I read. What if God willing to show his wrath and to make his power known, endure it with much long suffering, the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction, and that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy, which he had at thought prepared unto glory. 20, verse 24, the last verse. Even us whom he had called not called not of, of the Jews, only but also of the Gentiles. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Yes. Who is reading the next one? He Mark who, 16, 16. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. I want you to make sure you listen. He who believes shall what? And baptized shall be saved. He who believes shall what? Shall be saved. Can everyone open that verse? That's where the answer is. On Mark 16, verse 16. Okay, before we finish, can someone give me uh, John 3 18 to 21? John 3 18 to 21. Then give me first John 5, verse 12. Who is reading John 3? I've got John I thought three, Evans, eight. you were going to read that one. Yes, John Go 3, 18, 18 to 20. It says, whoever believes in him is not condemned. But whoever does not believe stands condemned already because they have not believed in the name of God's, in the name of God's one and only son. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but people loved darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil has the light and will not come into the light for fear that their deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that it may be seen plainly that what it may be seen plainly that what they have done has been done in the sight of God. Did you read verse 21? Yes. Okay, thank you. Who's going to read the last one? Well, first John, John, first, first John chapter 5, verse 12. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have God's Son does not have life. Amen. So, the answer that I later found out in Discover 
out of all the questions, I know some of you had similar questions. I don't know, do, am I the only one who had that question? To say, why would uh, God punish Pharaoh if he had already hardened his heart? Why would God uh, punish Judas, yet he was supposed to fulfill God's plan? Why? Who, from these scriptures, anyone who wants to try to answer those questions, you know, people ask us questions, said, God, if he has foreknowledge, it means he's already known things before. So if he has that foreknowledge, it means you already knew that someone is not going to be a Christian. Who have ever met questions like that? Am I the only one who come across people like that? Can I engage you for a minute? Let's mm. admit no, you're right, Pastor, because even there are times when people will say that not everyone is supposed to be a Christian. Some were called to actually be Muslims and whatnot. Yeah, well, and then so, else, but but the fact that they say there are some who are called to go to hell, who are already destined to go to hell. maybe I'm the only one we have heard people say that. Is there anyone else who has ever come across that question? Yeah, to say there are people who are just destined that they are going to hell. Yeah, it's part of the reason why a lot of people question a lot about Christianity as well. When they read, um, especially I think there was a verse which says, War to the Son of Man who was born. Was it the one who betrays the Son of Man? It was better if it, went, if it was not born. A lot of people who read the Bible have always contested me about that as well as and why so if he says that then why is he a good god something along those lines but yeah yeah because what i'm trying to open your minds to understand here is that i'm saying i don't know are you understanding what i'm saying if anyone is understanding my, what i'm trying to answer the question and try to answer please put a hand of amen to those who are closing their faces just show me that you are understanding what I'm saying. Okay. I have seen two so far. Three, four, right? Okay. Others are not hearing far is hearing there. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Right. Who wants to try after we had read these verses? Do you want to try and answer that? Judas was already condemned. God created him, condemned. He must just go to hell. Why would God uh, expect him to do well? Because Jesus said, I have called 12. One of them is a devil. So it means he already knew he was a devil. Why? How is it like that? Who wants to answer that question from the scriptures that we read? The answer is right there. Everywhere we were, read, we were reading, those verses we all read, they are answering this question. Yeah, why perfect. Pharaoh, why would Pharaoh be blamed by God? Yet God, the Bible said, Pharaoh, God hardened his heart. So why would God blame him? Because he's already hardened the heart of Pharaoh. That's not fair for him to blame Pharaoh because it was God who hardened his heart. Is that uh, true? Can I try, Pastor? Yes, go ahead. Okay, so I think, um, again, like, when we go back to the issue of uh, free will, because I think when we look at these verses, they say, I mean, I'll read John 3, verse 18, especially, it says, whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only son. So I think it, it all comes to a personal decision. I think God basically used someone who was... Um, already willing to not believe like he was not going to change his heart no matter what so god just uh i think god just used what was already there he just amplified what was already there like pharaoh was not going to change his own heart uh, so god just basically used him is, is what i i understand so far thank you shepherd that's very important that's very true and very powerful Anyone else who wants to add on to what Shepard just said? Yes. Wants to yes, Pastor. Yeah, Ezo, are you raising your hand or you're yes, saying? Yes, Pastor. Oh, Sister yes. Priscilla, go ahead. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, that's what I wanted to say also, that life is a choice according to the word of God. According to what Shepherd said, life is a choice. The Bible says you should choose whom you will serve. Some people have choose, chosen to serve Satan and they cannot repent. I quite remember back home in the church where I used to be, there are some people that have been Christian for 20 years. When the power of God move, because the power of God used to move, they have never known the Lord. But they, they, they have been hearing the word every day. Bring the, they know the whole Bible. They cram the Bible. They speak in tongues. But they have never accepted Jesus Christ as a personal Savior and Lord. Because they have not, they have not, they have not, they have, choose, they have chosen to serve Satan. They refuse Jesus. Jesus. But, it, but before men, they can preach, they, they can preach, they can share hallelujah, they can speak in tongues. But their heart, they have never known the Lord. I've seen many people like that. They have chosen to serve Satan and they, they are in church. They are leaders, they are elders. But when the power of God moves, God begins to expose them. He said they are confessing that I've been here for 20 years. I didn't believe in Jesus Christ. I know who I serve. So I, that's what I wanted to say to Pastor. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Sister Priscilla. That's okay. very, very true. It's a possibility. Because Judas was among them. Can you imagine? Yeah. He walked with God. Oh my God. That really scares me sometimes. Yeah. I look at people like that. Um, uh, what was um, uh, Gehazi? Hmm. Gehazi, the servant of the great man of God. Yeah. Who saw the end of God. Who, ah. Yeah, it's scary sometimes. It's scary. Really, really scary. To just think about it, you know. I, I, I was actually thinking about it and say it is very possible to walk and see God, but never get to a point of really believing God with your heart. Because I kept asking the same question, why would the Israelites be destroyed, all of them in the wilderness at the end of the day? Can you imagine the miracles that happened in the wilderness? Can you imagine? If it was our time, hmm, our church would have five million people. Hey, with those kind of miracles. But how many would be there to want to know the heart of God? You know, the scripture says the Israelites, they knew the hand of God, but they never got to a point of knowing the heart of God. So it's a possibility to be a believer. You know, just going back to what Shepard just said, to say that, um, we were given a free will. And it is possible that you can deny God right in his face and he will leave you there. Hmm. I think that's really scary just to think about it. And I, when I thought about it, I said, so that means Judas had an opportunity to change his mind. The opportunity was there, but I read again, Mark 16, 16. The opportunity was there Amen. For to repent. You could have repented. Someone read me Mark 16, verse 16. Let's so, just hear Pastor, what that's what I was going to actually mention. I was yeah. actually opened Mark 16, verse 16 and said, there's always that opportunity, even after the church is raptured. Those yeah. people that are remaining, they still have that opportunity because Mark 16, verse 16 says, whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. If you don't believe, you'll be condemned. There are no two ways about it. Let's think about the children of Israel. They all perished in the wilderness, guys. All of them, they perished in the wilderness. All of them, they perished in the wilderness. Can you imagine? So it's so simple to say, if we do not repent, if we know God by just our heads and our hearts, like what the Lord just said last night, if our hearts are not mind, heart and soul is not connected with God. And we, we just believe that, yes, we go to church, we are Christians. We, we, we are actually wasting our time. Because God wants more than just uh, believing. Uh, knowing, knowing God, he wants our hearts. He wants a relationship. 
He want you know you can if you're in a relationship you can tell this guy loves me or this guy doesn't love me. Am I right or wrong? Which is the reason why you walk away, right? You can tell he doesn't have to tell you that hey I'm not interested in you. You can see by actions. Am I right? Because if he end up going to propose to another girl, the reality is that he doesn't like you. He doesn't love you, right? It's a sign right there. It's a sign that he thinks you are not enough for him or you are not the right one. And he thinks the other one is going for. He wants a relationship with another one. Can you imagine? That's betrayal of trust and love. That's how God feels when we, 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 we are not connected to him alone faithfully. Hey. We are spiritual prostitutes, my God. Hmm. Spiritual prostitutes. We love God and we love the devil. We go to bed with God, we go to bed with the devil. At the same time, that shows we are not loyal to one and only Yahweh. We are not yet loyal to him. He wants you. That's why Jesus keeps saying, he said to that young man, he said, I do everything in church, everything. I pay my tithe. I, I do everything. And he said, oh, no, that's okay. He said, what else? He said, love the Lord your God with all your what? Your heart. With all your? Can somebody unlock? I'm mute and tell me. What did with Jesus all say? Your heart. With all your heart. And with our what? So. so. What did he say? He loved, say, love the Lord your God with what in what in what? With all your heart. Lord, with, Lord, heart with, all your soul. Lord, with all your heart, with all your with all your might. So with all your look for heart, that and read it. Heart, might, and soul. And read it for me. Look for that verse and read it for me. That's the most difficult part for a believer. We love God. You know, this young man say, I do that, I do all this, I do all this. But then Jesus says to him, Okay, love the Lord. You're going with all your heart. With all your what? I'm not going to say this. With all your soul and with all your mind. Right. That's what the Lord just said last night, right? To say that people, they are praying to me, but their mind and their soul and spirit is not connected. So loving God, it's a connection between mind, soul, and spirit, right? And the body together. Then the body will come in what? In conformity. When you allow yourself to love God with your mind, with your heart, and with your, your, your soul. Then, oh, when we say that, God will love us. So it's possible to be a church member. Amen. It's possible to be a church member for years, but still go to hell. Because he wants, you, you don't believe you are condemned. Mark 16, verse 16 must really scare us. Can you read it for the last time, Piola? Mark 16, verse 16. Read it for the last time and we move on. It says, whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. Amen. Remember that verse, okay? I'm going to finish um, uh, Revelation 13. The proclamation, you know, there's a proclamation at the end that says, if any man have an ear, let him hear. It reminds us of the often repeated statement in Revelation chapter 2 and chapter 3. Chapter three, uh, Revelations 1, 2, and 3. Except that uh, we hear the words, what the Spirit says to the churches are conspicuously absent unless we hear. So this is one proof that the church is no longer on earth from Revelations uh, chapter four found, um, uh, if you read from chapter four to chapter nine, 19, 20, you realize that everything that is happening, the church is no longer on earth. So uh, Revelations four forward into the tribulation period, the church is no longer on earth. So the proclamation implies that some people will choose to hear and others will choose not to hear. Revelation 13 verse 10, it says, 
He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience of the faith of the saints. But of other versions, I like the NIV version. It says, if anyone is to go into captivity, into captivity will he go. If anyone is to be killed with the sword, with the sword, he will be killed. Uh, you can also read that one uh, in ESV English Standard Version. Uh, it, it will really show you what I'm trying to say. Um, as we conclude um, chapter 12, uh, I also want you to look at, um, remember Jeremiah 15 verse two, that talked about it shall come to pass if they say unto thee, whither shall we go forth? Thou shalt uh, tell them, that says the Lord, such as are for death to death and such are for the sword to the sword. Such are for the famine to the famine and such are to the captivity to the captivity. Amen. So there is, however, in these words, warning to persecutors that they shall be punished in kind. God will visit upon the persecutors his retributive justice and vengeance. All violence exercised upon the saints shall be avenged upon the persecutors by God. So in bearing their appointed fate and in the sure promise that God shall avenge them lies the patience and the faith of the saints. Hallelujah. I will continue verse 11 next week, but I just wanted to make sure what our takeaway today is that there is no one who God has created condemned. Did we understand that? No one was created condemned that they don't qualify for deliverance. Did, are we clear on that one? Was, I think that's what is key to this verse. We have heard a lot of people saying that Judas was already condemned. Why would God ask him to repent? No way. But today we have been able to realize that it's not true. It's not true that the children of uh, Israel were already condemned to perish in the wilderness, but it was after they denied God themselves. I want to end my teaching there today. If there's anyone with a question, a contribution, please feel free to ask a question or to make a contribution on today's teaching. I have a question, Pastor. Contribution. I have a question. Quiet. Please, I, I want to know, after the church has been raptured, which, uh, can anyone repent again and go to heaven? Yes. But this is where they will enter with their own blood. When we say they will enter with their own blood, there will be a lot of suffering. All these things we are hearing will be happening to them. All these things that will happen, the church is not supposed to go through it. It's supposed to be raptured. And then afterwards, all these things, they will start to happen. And all the people who have refused to accept Christ, the blood of Jesus right now and the grace of God, they are the ones who enter with their own blood with all this suffering. And we have read in the Bible, we want to explain further this one because we've talked about this a lot. Can anyone among you explain to Mama Priscilla what is going to happen after the church is raptured to those who remain, are they going to just be condemned and destroyed on this earth? I want you to give me with the terms and the names. If you know the scriptures, please say them. Oh, Pastor, sorry, I don't really have the scriptures right wait, now. Wait, 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 give others a chance. 
I know you know you've written your notes there. I just want others have been too quiet. Let me hear their voices too. You say it last, I'll let you go. Can I have other students talk to me, talk to me, talk to me? What is going to happen to those who remain behind? Let's talk about it. I'll start with um I'll so start with um Tapiwa, then Yevedzo, then Evans, then Laureate, Fari, Shepard, in that order. Let's see. Odia, you were here. Yeah. You should be able to give me a response to that one, too. Let's go, Tapsi. Yeah. Uh, th <clears throat> thank you, Pastor, for, for the teaching. Um, <clears throat> I, I was just going to read Revelation chapter 6, verse 9. I think that's where we were talking about this. Um, when the fifth seal was opened, I saw under an altar the souls of those who had been slain because of the word of God and the testimony they had maintained. They called out in a loud voice, how long, sovereign Lord, holy and, and true, until you judge the inhabitants of the earth and avenge our blood. I think this is when we were talking about uh, the saints of the tribulation, those people we had chosen uh, to you know, preach the, the word and give an opportunity to those two people who had left after the rapture of the church to come uh, unto salvation. Mm -hmm. But these ones suffered, um, they entered by their, their own blood. That is what we talked about. So there's an opportunity again, uh, but these are the individuals who will be entering um, into salvation by their own blood. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tapsi, right there. Explaining, yeah, well, let's go, let's hear your side. Yeah, so for the people, so for the, so after rapture, that's when people will realize that uh, the only place that they can find salvation is through Christ. And there will be that tribulation and persecution of, of the saints. And yeah, and I think, uh, yeah. And and people who have a, I think so. Wait, ah uh, no. <laughs> but I think after the first three and a half years, there are some people who who can be saved. Remember, but there will be. And I think you talk about that. Uh, wait, about X. I think it was X two verse fifteen. But I don't remember. Okay, I want you to go and read again. And when you talk about this, I want you to tell us what kind of tribulation, what are the troubles, what are the problems, what are the issues are they going to face? What is going to happen? And if they overcome that, then they will enter heaven. Because they're going to enter by their own blood. What is going to happen? I've been giving you all that information. What will happen to those who remain after the rapture? Those people who are claiming to be Christians, and then rapture comes and they don't make it. What is going to happen to them to make it to heaven? Let's have Lori, then Evans, and then Shepi, Fari, and then Odia. Um, so from what I remember, those that will get, get um, left behind, they will suffer, they will be, they will suffer a lot of tribulation to the point such suffering that they will not die. Um, it will be consistent suffering and they will not die. There will be the chosen that will be left behind because the church will be gone. There will, those that were chosen, is it the 144,000 or something like that? I can't remember the number that will be left behind to continue to, to preach the message and they will have another chance uh, to hear the word and to choose, but they will go through so much suffering and pain. They'll be beaten. They'll be, everything will be done to them, but they will not die. Mm -hmm. That's part of it. Yes, Evans. Thank you, thank you, Pastor. I am partially recalling you talking about uh, some of the stuff that has already been mentioned about the suffering, the uh, uh, pandemics, epidemics, and uh, all that stuff. And and uh, we have scriptures that explain those things. Yeah, that's a difficult part. I, I will have to go back and find them then present. But uh, it's mostly the suffering 
that is going to be there where people will be tested upon their belief, like for those that will be choosing to go and believe in God to become Christians again, they will be tested. And that's where uh, the, the notion that they will go through their blood comes in because a lot will be done to them to make sure to to test their reason reasonableness in in Christ. That's especially what I remember. Okay. Well, I have Who's next? The uh, sorry. Oh, sorry, Pastor. I didn't. Uh, okay. So um. I think pastor like uh well i unfortunately i can't recall the the scriptures right now but i remember you mentioned that uh so rapture is going to be like a secret event so not everyone like um will know like for example the people who are going to remain behind they will not actually see like rapture taking place so the people who are going to remain behind including the christians will like some of the people who are christians now but we're not going to be able to make it to heaven. They will know that rapture has uh, taken place. And some of those people are the ones who are going to remain behind and, you know, continue preaching the word of God and, um, you know, churches. And, and obviously they're going to face all the, the trials and tribulations when they remain on earth. Okay. And what will happen to them? You remember? Mm, not quite sure. Okay, uh, let's hear Shepard. Um, so what, what I remember about the time of tribulation, uh, I will read from Revelation chapter nine. Um, like the verse one says, and the fifth angel sounded and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth. And to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit, as the smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and unto them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but, they, but that they should be tormented for five months. And their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he striketh a man. And in those days shall men seek death and shall not find it and shall not desire to die and death shall flee from them. So I think this, uh, this depicts one of the uh, periods during uh, tri tribulation when people will be you know, tried and tested. Like you mentioned that they will basically enter by their own blood. If they miss rapture, they have to either endure these tortures and torments or they will eventually just give in and uh, no longer bear the seal of God on their foreheads, but then they would have to bear uh, that the, the mark of the beast uh, is, is what I gather so far in general about the time of tribulation. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Shepi. I want to encourage all of us. Are we done? Where is Odia? Do you want to talk to us? Yeah, Pastor, I'm just going to be transparent with you. Um, I am really trying to soak in all these teachings because my church doesn't necessarily um, teach that the rapture is going to happen. So I'm a little confused. <laughs> but from what I um, from what I heard from what you were teaching um, mm -hmm. and just at the tail end, I, I joined late today. But um, the thing that stuck out to me is that we are not going to be condemned and that, you know, um, the rapture those folks that are left behind will still have a chance to um, make it, although it'll be super, super hard. Mm -hmm. um, so sorry, that's all I can offer. Okay, you did well. 
to make it easier for you. Thank you, Odia. Thank you, Shepard, Fari, Lori, Evans, and Yevetso. Pippi, you want to go now? Did you speak? Oh, okay. I can go. So in the Great Tribulation, the saints will go around uh, proclaiming the world, to, proclaiming the word of God to everyone. And so two things will actually happen during that time. That's when the greatest revival will okay in that time of tribulation. And so uh, this is where we talk about the 144 Jews that are selected from the 12 tribes uh, of Israel that they will go around preaching the gospel to everyone. And so whoever then believes that's, that those are the ones that will be also be saved. So Joel, 12, Joel, I think it was in Joel 2 verse 6 to 24. And then we also have like um, a time when the great two witnesses will come and we will witness the word of God. And so as they witness people, some of the people that do not really believe, they will feel like the pain of them speaking the word of God. And some of them, so there are people who are going to wish to die, but they will not be able to die. This will happen all in the great tribulation. And so... And then there's also a great harvest of soul that will happen because then even the Holy Spirit will still be there harvesting souls. Okay. I just Thank did you. a summary. Thank you, Pippi. I would encourage to say to all of you, I said from chapter one to chapter three, right? Of the book of Revelation. This is the time for the church now, right? We are in the time of the church. Chapter one of Revelations to chapter three, the church is still on earth and nothing is gonna happen until the rapture takes place. From chapter four, rapture takes place, right? We'll be gone, the church is nowhere to be found. Chapter four to chapter 19, all this, what is happening is to those, all these things we are learning, it's going to happen to those who will have remained after rapture. So from chapter four to chapter 19, all the teachings that I am giving right now is going to happen to those who will remain on earth, right? From chapter 20, you're going to see that the church is back with Christ on earth, right? And chapter 20 and chapter 21, you see Christ is back with the church reigning on this earth, new heaven and new earth, right? So whatever is happening from chapter four to chapter 19, it's happening to those who remain on earth. Whatever is happening from chapter 20 to 21, the church is back on earth. So here is my other question. What is going to happen to those who remain on earth? Will the Holy Spirit still be here? What about that? Can someone speak to me? Where will be the Holy Spirit during the tribulation period? First, I just mentioned it, that the Holy Spirit is going to be here harvesting souls. He's going to be back. Yes. Right. So the Holy Spirit will still be here working in the hearts of those who will believe. Amen. You go with those who go and you come back for those who will believe him. You will still be here until the... Can someone just read Revelation 9 verse 20 to 21? Revelation 9, verse 21, I read. Mm -hmm. And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not of the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood, which neither can see nor hear nor walk, neither repented they of their mothers, no, of their sorcery, no, of their fornication, no, of their thefts. Amen. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So, 
you know, the rest of, all, of mankind were not killed by plagues, did not repent of the works of their hands, so as not to worship demons and the idols of gold or silver, of brass and of stone and wood, which can neither see nor hear nor walk. And they did not repent of their murders, nor of their sorcerers, nor of their immorality, nor of their thefts. What does this mean? It means like in the days of Noah. Remember the days of Noah. They kept on doing what they were doing. Even when Noah went into the ark, remember, Noah went into the ark and he invited people to come into the ark and they still refused. They thought Noah was a crazy man. That's what is still going to happen. Even with rapture, remember satellites will be there. Remember the antichrist will be there. Remember what will happen, they'll still publicize to say there are people who are not being found. They'll find whatever to say and they'll not mention rapture. It's only those who have learned and understood if you remain on earth today and you have heard these teachings, you will know this is what Pastor Rebecca was talking about. Rapture has taken place. I have been, I've remained behind and you shall see everything that shall happen for the word of God does not lie. It will come to pass. It will come to pass. Rapture will surely take place. But remember, people are going to say rapture is not coming to place. I went to seminary where I was taught that the book of Revelation has already been fulfilled. That's what I was taught at seminary. I was taught that the book of Revelation has already been fulfilled. But I had to pray and ask the Holy Spirit to reveal the truth to me. And this is the truth that Jesus is coming back again. Rapture is surely going to take place. And the truth is a lot of people, especially churches, they shall remain behind just like the days of Noah. The scripture says that just like in the days of Noah, they would marry when they saw the first rains. They thought it's the normal, the usual rain because the ark of Noah was just seated on the ground when it started raining church. Do you understand what I'm saying? It started raining for two days. The ark of Noah was still on the ground and people were like, why is this, uh, why, why, why is it not flying to heaven? If ever it is true that the ark, God is gonna destroy the earth with water. They were watching, they were seeing. After five days, they started to make moves to go and knock on the ark of Noah. But God, the Bible says God shut Noah in and sealed. Nobody could enter. Let me tell you, church of God, let's be ready. Jesus is coming back again. This is not a gimmick. This is not a joke. If you miss it the first time with the rapture, you enter with your own blood. You will be part of this tribulation. And thank God you've heard the message. You will be part of it. You know, the suffering that is going to be here, read from chapter 4 to, to verse 19. Uh, to those who, who were not there when I gave these teachings, audio. I know that order you were not here when we started, but you can um, talk to Tonde. Let me know, he can give you some orders so that you can actually listen to the first teachings I've given on chapter four. Uh, I'm giving, now, now I'm on chapter 13. That will make you understand what is gonna happen. And already things are falling in place to those who can watch the times. Amen. Oh, Pastor, are we going to hear a trumpet? Oh, just, 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 just talk to me after service. Okay, after sure. Yeah. This, I'm going to let Tony give you some of the, um, the, 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 the recordings, right? We have all the recordings from chapter one. Sounds I good. Thank Sister you. Pris Sister Priscilla, you got them, right? You got all your recordings from chapter one. Oh, good. So uh, she can, you can also forward them to you. Can you do that? Can you forward to them to Sister Odia? Okay, don't worry, I'll talk to Tony. He can do it for you. So 
We just want to thank God tonight. Anyone else with a question? We are closing. Anyone else? Pastor, just a quick question. Mark 16, verse 16. It says that whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. Okay, so my question is, I understand there are people who actually believe, but they go to different churches where they are not baptized the same way that Jesus Christ was baptized. Does it mean that those people, even if they believe, will be condemned? Uh, that's what the Bible says. So I really don't know what discretion God is going to use. Okay. But uh, according to what we are reading from the Bible, that's what it means. And that's what it is saying. What I would know is what discretion God is going to use for those. Because I think for some, they are innocent. But for some, they heard it and they don't believe it. Okay. They have a choice to go and get baptized. Because I think for some, the truth is they hear it. And they are, they are being told by people. They see people being fully immersed. And they ask the questions. And they are being answered. And they think what they've heard is what is true. So if you don't have, the, the most difficult thing Fari, about being a Christian is the revelation of the spirit on what you read in the scriptures. Just like uh, the same verse, this same verse, it, mean, it can mean something to someone and it can really be a lifesaver and it can change your life. This same verse can just be knowledge, head knowledge for someone and it doesn't ever mean anything. You read the same verse, the revelation, the enlightenment, enlightenment that Paul talks about in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 19. May you be enlightened. Once the Holy Spirit enlighten your spirit being and your mind, you begin to see things differently. But if there's no enlightenment, you just see the word of God, you read it as he had knowledge for apologetics and all other things. But spiritually, it's not doing anything. There is no transformation. There is no revelation. There is no breakthrough through the word. It's just head knowledge word. It's a story. It's a narrative. You know, the Bible, at Bible school, they teach us to understand the Bible. It's narratives. So it can simply become a story, a story of the past, history, it can simply be history plus a bit of theology on top of it, which is your belief system. So that's what happens when we uh, don't get the revelation of the word. The word does not speak directly into our lives. And we tend to argue with it a lot. Did I answer you, Fari? Yes, thank you. You know, one thing that the scripture says, it says in the, I shall give you, I shall remove the heart of stone and give you the, in the last days, the heart of flesh. No one shall teach people, uh, another to say no God. So to be honest, our conscience, we know God. All of us, we know what is right. We know what is wrong, whether a Christian or a non-believer. We all know consciously, you know that to gossip is bad. To beg bite someone is bad. To steal is bad. Whether you're a Christian or not, God has put the laws in everyone, every human being's heart. But over and above that, there's what is called the free will, whereby you have to make a choice. Do I want the leading of God in my life? Or I want to still lead my life the way I want? We talked about miracles does not make you become a, have a relationship with God. We have seen the children of Israel there were so, so many miracles, but they still died in the wilderness. Nothing in their lives changed. They knew the end of God, but they didn't know the heart of God. So it's a possibility to be a Christian who knows the end of God, but who doesn't know the heart of God. It is also possible in the times of Noah, there were also Christians who, who did not get the revelation to say what this man is talking about, to receive a revelation that it was a true voice from God to say he should build the ark. Henceforth, he called them in. They still did not go. So grace was there, but they denied it, and they were led to condemnation. So I think this is what 
we need to understand. Amen. Amen. Pastor, I want one question, please. Mm -hmm. It's not about rapture, but it's a question that has been bothering me for years. Mm -hmm. I want to know if the Holy Spirit is the voice of God. <laughs> the Holy Spirit is one, is God. The three in one, the Trinity, God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is God. He does not talk about himself. He talks about what the Father gives to him. Okay. That's why Jesus says, I do, what I speak is not from me. I take it from the Father and I pass it on to you. The Holy Spirit also, he says, he will take from me and he will pass it down to you. So Holy Spirit is God. One, God. Three in one, but with different, uh, different roles. They have different, come on Saturday, I'm going to be on a panel on this uh, Facebook um, this Saturday. And I, I'll be sharing about um, who is the Holy Spirit in today's world. I'll be having other two more pastors and we'll be talking on Saturday after our uh, women conversations. Right after that, I'll be on another forum talking about who is the Holy Spirit the, and the, the four dimensions of the Holy Spirit. So come on Saturday, okay. I'll send you the flyer. Okay, thank you, Pastor. Mm -hmm. thank you. I think I'll give it to Shepard to just post it on the church forum for thank those you, who want to attend that one. Yeah. Okay, are we, are, we, are we good? Yes, Pastor, I'm good. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Uh, yeah, let's all close with a prayer. Uh, thank you, Pastor. Also, the link to the recordings, I put it in the chat. Oh, good. Thank you so much. Oh, dear, did you see the link in the chat? Um, let me, I don't, let me just double check the chat here. Click on the chats there. There's okay. what they call uh, oh, yep, I see it. I'm going to copy it now. Thank you, guys. Yeah, Thank, Thank you. you. Oh, dear.